for thousands of years. It was a very important part of their diet, not only because it was the first, but it was also, it was a medicine. So that long time ago, when we come around to all our seasons, bitter it is one of the first plants, the sunflowers, and first ones that we our sustenance. Oh. Yeah. People would travel long, all over to to dig. It's all over in these back back here by the rivers, up on the hills. And travel all over to get our first supply. Mm, num num, huh, baby? steady diet, it thins the blood and it makes your blood run a lot better through your body. So our ancestors ate very well, very healthy. And so they, were, they didn't go through really what a lot of people say there was, you know, they went through some hard times, but they never looked at it that way. It was a way of life. It was happy times. It was family. It was times when family we're always together like we were today, helping each other, watching over each other. And I hope that you young people continue to do what your elders, you watched your elders today as they spoke, as they talked to you about the importance of our way of life. All the peoples that you see on the walls, they're all people that gave us a little bit of something of our culture, of our language, of our way of life, of our values. Every year we lose some of our people. Every year we lose some important information, important leadership. Driving to Dick Bidru in the heart of the Confederated Salish and Kootenai Tribes Reservation in Montana, we see signs of the modern influence as we travel to participate in a yearly Salish event that goes back to pre-European contact. The Salish people have continued to maintain their land, culture, language, and seasonal food gathering traditions. Beetroot was very important to the Salish people because it was one of the first plants to emerge in the spring and provided much needed nutrition after a long cold winter. 
We come to a good digging spot with a group of Salish natives, Arlene Adams, Mary Jane Charlo, Caroline Toxdifferent, and Liliani Fox Howard. They demonstrate the how and the personal importance of the annual Salish Beetroot Dig. And this is the newest stuff. Uh... Beetroot digging is done with a pet set or a pitchfork in order to dig up the ground and not break the roots. I always start out with this pet set. On these bitter, you have to dig them before they bloom, because when they bloom, when they bloom, it's already too late and they're too stringy, and you can't clean them. There you go. Thank you. See, these are really nice, nice size. The roots are the sought after portion of the plant to eat. And see when I, when I rubbed them like this, the best time to clean them is when you pick them. These are just right too. See the outer skin peels right off. Yeah, some of the ends are already starting to get hard to peel. And dry. Pink. Pink and dry. I talk about it. <laughs> Man, I look forward to all of this as far as my own health and my year goes. When the digging is complete, the bidru is cleaned and the remaining parts are returned to the earth. You used to bend it over the thing. Oh, yeah. Didn't bend over for a long time. <laughs> oh, she did it. Oh. <laughs> Good job, Evie. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> She's all smiling, I don't know what to do with it. Hi, <laughs> <laughs> honey. Good job. That's a good one. Good yours. Oh, thank you. <gasps> thank you. You want to taste it? When digging, people are strongly encouraged to leave the land in its original condition as to not destroy future bitroot digging opportunities.
Oh, lots of horsepower, huh? What's his name? What's his name? <sighs> Buffalo Bill? Yeah. <laughs> oh, okay. We thought this farmer guy or somebody. It's tribal. <laughs> Thought we was going to have to fight. Nice. Oh, <laughs> we have to fight. Didn't bring no weapons today. <laughs> How you doing? Foot. How you doing? Great, girl. Then I've gone all over the place. Been down all along the river and up on top and around there. Do you do that all every day, every day or? Well, <clears throat> we knew that a lot of folks would be out today. Mm. I was up there at. Uh, <laughs> He's peeling roots. Yeah. <laughs> One uh, uh, yesterday, it's up in Big Draw. Went to the um, Kootenai folks up there, taking them bitter. That must have been, I imagine, about a, almost eight or nine folks there. Cool. Just waiting for the nice weather to come out. Yeah. We're just starting to get a little rain. But won't be long, we'll be flowering. Yeah. I was checking this out all out there the other day. Weren't left. Is there any on that other stretch on that side? You guys just missed there's a bunch of it over in those little swales in there. Yeah. I had them walk that over that way then. How about on the other side of the bridge, that way? Uh no, I didn't walk over there. No. Usually, but there's a lot of them in here. I was going to walk along the edge here, but I ran out of time. And I got to get out of here. Yeah. My name's Mike McKeldry. I'm our um, main investigator for our fishing game department for the tribe. I'm out patrolling, seeing, uh, seeing how many criminals are out here picking bitterroot. <laughs> Has there been quite a few people out digging bitterroot? Well, there, there's been a few. I, I run up to some of the folks from Elmo Country yesterday, and uh, and we had the whole uh, half of Flathead tribe over there on the other side of the mountains here a couple of days ago. Yeah. But uh, nice. yeah, it's a, a joyful time. Everybody laughing and giggling around, having a good time. <clears throat> you know what? I'd like to mix this with Hus. It's really good. Yeah. Yeah. Smoke it. I like mine with Sabbath berries the best. Oh, that imagine. But I like to just eat. I like to eat a lot of husks with it. This year, kind of a double dose. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, Mama. Yeah. Have a good day. Yeah. You too. You too. You guys have good. Guys, it's always yeah. good to see you, girl. Yeah, you too. See you. Yeah. My name is Stadtalas de Ek, Thunderflower, Arlene Adams, and I'm out here today because Mayaya said I come out here for the babies. For me, it's a time for my own rejuvenation of looking at my year, looking at what happened last year, and bringing me back to, to today and to this way of being able to ask for guidance and ask for those things to whatever went wrong last year and to look at those things and leave them all there and to look at the next year and the good health and happiness. I, um, <clears throat> I really look forward to this time for mostly for myself as far as helping with my own internal healing and the Indian medicines that we need that help us and the Indian food only comes around once a year and they say we 
when we come out here, the story is we can cry and ask for those things that we need. We can cry and ask for those hurts and pains that maybe we lost somebody. Maybe we just had a bad year for some reason. But we can come out here and just be glad and thankful that these are here for us because we can ask them so that's like touching God the way they tell us the way yayas all our yayas and everybody come out here and put their chiyas on their heads and look at the our material things that's what that represents they tell us ask for our chiyas when we go to dance, our winter dances, and we put them on, they tell us to put them on all year, and cry with them, and pray with them, they're here to help us too, and our, tell us that our, our mind and our heart is a 12 inch connection, and can be divided up into four however many seasons you you believe in you feel and I do all of this for that little baby there and for my grandkids now my kids I don't get all welled up when I come out here as far as wishing somebody was with me that's not my purpose of coming here is to is to pray for those people too, my family, my friends, my new grandbabies. And I, I had a really, really hard time all year with losing Ushni and today she gave me a song or I've been singing this song for a while. And I'm hoping it'll come out, so I I asked for that too today. And all of those personal things that I can't I can't explain. I can't put on tape on tape or something that I don't want it to to be boastful or to that prayer to be ruined. So. They tell us that when we have our creation stories, they're told a certain time of year. And so we honor that. We always pay attention to those things of the past that teach us and keep us going for today. So I'm happy today to be able to come out here and talk and sing and laugh, and pray. Pray for our way, pray for our day, pray for all of the things that, that we need, all the rain, the elements that see, these plants will take all our prayers with them and do the best they can to help us as long as we continue to do the best we can to help ourselves. I'm happy and thankful for my friends that want to come here and, and still be, be connected, take their babies out. So all of that is good health and food and good medicine for our future, for our lives, for each other to be prosperous and happy and in our homes and on the dance trails and whatever it is that we do in our work, school, jobs, whatever it is, we ask for all of that all the, all the time. But this time of year, you know, when we shed our tears, we also ask for those tears not to bother anybody. Part of that story is it was a 
that's where these plants come from, is from our yayas, from our tupias, shedding their tears that we might be here today. So Lem Lem Chai, I look for this green plant right here. And it's got a little bit of buds on it. You may say that, you know, in a short time that it's going to be hard to peel. So we try to get out here and peel them and we'll pick them before they're budding. So they're only here a short time. And they also tell us that when we peel them, and if they turn pink, we really look at our way after they're dried or after they're put away and they turn pink, then we look at ourselves and help, help ourselves not to be lazy if that's what happens. And today I'm happy. I'm happy they didn't turn pink on me. <laughs> they said that long time ago. When we come around to all our seasons, bitter it is one of the first plants. The sunflowers and first ones that we our sustenance. Our people would travel all over to to dig. It's all over in these back back here by the rivers, up on the hills, and travel all over to get our first supply of we'd have to gather for all year and for our homes, for our dances, for our lodges, for all of those those people that may have left memorials, whatever it was, you know, that we still do that. We still gather for all those times. The first foods are most important because they're not, they say they're just visitors. They come here and, and they're visiting and giving us life, short time to continue on all year. And then it opens up the, for all the other plants to come, for all the other relatives that are coming to help our hearts, coming to help our minds, and coming to feed our bodies. So we take time out, come out here and pay tribute to our first foods. All year we're, we're going to encounter first time yeah, for our foods. And our old people tell us that that's the only time, you know, that some of them are only going to be around short time. You go out and gather them when it's, when it's time. They're not going to wait around for you. It shows you how, shows people that, you know, all year when comes time for things and you have them and you gathered them that how important it is that you connect with your environment, animals, plants, all your first time foods from, from this day on. Our old people gave us all year to prepare. They give us a way of life that we start out with at the beginning of the year and we jump hard for all of these things to come to us. And so we honor that by coming out here and taking care of ourselves, taking care of our way of life so that those little ones there will have something when they, when they get old and it's time for them to pass things along. And so for the first time of every season we make sure that we visit our relatives because they'll take all our aches and pains back and look at them and doctor on them. 
we do all these things with one heart, they'll give it back to us. I'm not sure. The actual feast is a time of socializing, eating, prayer, and hopes for a good new year. Come on, Barry. <laughs> oh. Oh yeah. yeah, it's it's ready. Yeah. So who takes it out there? Whoever's um, strong enough. Whoever's yo yo. Whoever wants to put it on the cart. Okay. Yeah. Deer that, and also for our health. 